Good morning everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to be talking about rhizoctonia with Daniel Hubley from the South Perth office. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Dominic. What I'm going to go through this morning is how to identify what is causing your patch in your cereals and then when that's identified uh, as being rhizoctonia, what options are available to solve those uh, issues. Uh, so that include a number of different things and it's not all just uh, one thing, it needs to be integrated management approach. So that includes crop selection, weed control, sowing early, cultivation, which is always a good one, seed treatments and inferofungicides, and then of course nutrition. With soil-borne diseases, they are not easy things to work with because there are no in-season control options. You can't go over the top of your crop and spray a fungicide uh, to solve that problem. The main control options for soil-borne diseases are rotation. And so it's very important then to identify what is causing that issue, the patches that you see or the um, uh, wavy crop. You need to identify that now or until before harvest and then respond at or before the sowing in 2016. So that's why it's complicated. We know from uh, autumn this year that rhizoctonia is spread all across uh, from the north down to the southern region um, and these are the DNA levels in the soil um, as determined by predictor B at Saudi. Just to highlight, the orange and the red are the medium and high levels of rhizoctonia in the soil and you can see they are spread across the whole region. The bigger the pie chart is, the more samples that were sent in. So here I think is Katanning quite a large number of samples were sent in from there. So we know what's there, but what you see expressed in the paddock is uh, dependent on the environment. So if that's what you're seeing in your paddock, then you really need to identify what that is. What we do, we dig up the roots, we have a look at, at the roots once they're washed, and then if you see the classic spear tipping, this is an uh, early um, uh, a seedling. You can see the spear tips there, and this is an older plant. All the crown roots have been uh, chomped off by rhizoctonia. So that's the important uh, part. Rhizoctonia causes uh, spear tipping and brown lesions on the roots. Now for diagnosis, you can send them through Agwes Plant Laboratory, APL. Um, we have a YouTube. Uh, which I'll show at the end in the links section, which shows you how you should collect your plants and send them to AgWest um, plant laboratories. But basically to summarise, collect plants from healthy area, um, just outside of the patch, but also collect plants from the edge of the patch, not the centre, and send them in two separate bags. Make sure you dig them up very carefully so that the roots are intact. And of course you want to leave the soil on there because that does protect the roots. Don't wash them off, that's the important part. And before sending them, or when you collect them and before sending them, keep them in a cool place, not at the back of the ute. Once you know what you've got, uh, and it's rhizoctonia, here are some of the things that you can do. So if it's very high levels or there's a lot of plants and patches that are affected with rhizoctonia root rot, then the best thing would be to consider sowing a grass-free crop, um, i.e. that's canola, pulses or pastures, obviously grassy-free pastures. But if you choose to sow a cereal, then there's a number of options and really, again, there's not one a single option that you should do, you should do as many as you can on this uh, list here. And the more you do, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Firstly, 
at the time uh, when you're deciding on what you're going to put in uh, and you know you've got rhizoctonia, the best thing is, is if you're going to go cereals, go with oats, they are le least susceptible of the cereals and then wheat and barley is actually the most susceptible so try and avoid barley if you can if you've got a rhizoctonia paddock. Important part is to have good grass weed control and that is four to six weeks before sowing so don't do it um, after that time or very close to the sowing because then you run the risk of uh, the weeds getting infected and yes they do all get infected because they're hosts and then that would jump across into your uh, freshly growing cereal crops so that's what you want to avoid the other thing you can do is sow early so that will allow the roots to develop very quickly and sort of outgrow the pathogen and also the roots develop at the time when the pathogen is least active it's more active in the cooler uh, conditions so when it comes to sowing or you can do it just before sowing as well cultivation is always a very good option to, to use um, and that's usually a up to 10 centimeters below the seed and what it does it's two things it allows a channel for the roots to grow down very quickly and also it uh, disrupts this hyphal network of the pathogen so it's a very good good tool to use if you are able to do so and the soils are not too uh, inhibiting uh, to, to pull the plough through the other thing is you will consider now you have two options I guess is seed treatments and also infra fungicides. The infra fungicides are two: there's Evergold Prime and Uniform. Um, these are registered for rhizoctonia control. Seed dressings there are a number of different options, and again at the end of this presentation there's a link to seed dressings and infra um, options, so you can have a look at there what's available for rhizoctonia as well as other root disease diseases and then the final thing is make sure you put down adequate nutrition for the seedlings and the developing plants at the time of tillering so that's your nitrogen your phosphorus as well as some of the minor uh, micronutrients as well um, healthy plants tend to to outgrow diseases much better and that's why you want to make sure you've got good uh, nutrition so just the final slide, some links. Um, as I said earlier, here's the uh, link to the seed dressing in infra fungicides, so you can have a look at that. And then also the YouTube on collecting plants to identify rhizoctonia through APL. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you, Daniel.